ask unanimous consent that I be allowed to complete my remarks prior to the roll call vote. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. If the Constitution is the foundation of our republic, then the concept of one person, one vote is the cornerstone. It's also a promise that every single eligible voter in America takes with them into that voting booth on election day. It gives them confidence that their vote matters. It helps them to keep the faith in our electoral system and in their local government. We can talk about the vote on a grand scale here in Washington, but that's where it really matters. Back home, at your local polling place, in your home county, and in the precincts with the people who do the work of standing up elections, running elections, and certifying their own elections. Madam President, it is of the people, by the people, for the people, that this process is carried out in each and every one of our counties. And you know what, Madam President, that is how it is supposed to be. Article 1, Section 4 of our Constitution clearly states, here it is, the times, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. Well, how about that? The Constitution delegates that authority to the state legislatures. And that is why our state secretaries of state work with our counties to make certain that the process is put in place. You know, I have had the opportunity to serve on my county's local election commission prior to my being in elective office. One person, one vote. That is the number one rule that guided the decisions they made. When we recruited poll workers, it's the number one concern that drives people to go sign up. When we train the volunteers that are staffing polling places, it's the number one rule to teach. Every person gets one vote. All legally cast votes are counted. That's the way it is supposed to work. One person, one vote. Here in the Senate, I'm concerned that my Democratic colleagues have forgotten about this rule. Why else would they once again pledge to move a piece of legislation that would throw one person, one vote out the window? Many of my Republican colleagues have taken to calling H1 or S1 the Politicians Protection Act or the For the Politicians Act. And I will have to agree that is a fairly apt description. Now, there are a lot of problems with this bill, but I want to focus on a few key provisions that will gut one person, one vote and destroy confidence in our elections. If this bill passes, say goodbye to meaningful voter ID laws. Now, my Democratic colleagues kept the idea of these requirements intact, but to please their radical base, they added a loophole that would force every single jurisdiction to accept affidavits in lieu of identification. That is right, an affidavit. They may as well have banned voter IDs because that loophole makes requirements that voters prove they are who they say they are absolutely meaningless. They can just sign a statement saying, I am who I say I am, without having to show proof. The bill also requires states to allow paid campaign operatives to engage in ballot harvesting schemes. That is right. This allows 
your paid campaign operatives to engage in ballot harvesting schemes. Now, these ballot harvesting schemes have been proven time and again to increase the risk of fraud so much so that many states on their own moved forward and banned ballot harvesting schemes. Why did they ban this? Because it leads to fraud in elections. Inexplicably, my colleagues also want to throw ballot drop boxes into the mix. They've pitched them as a convenience, but that convenience will be nearly impossible to monitor and to protect 24 hours a day, which means that it will be nearly impossible to monitor and protect the ballots that are inside those boxes. And these boxes then become a fairly convenient way to stuff the ballot box. But perhaps the most dangerous, counterproductive, and outright infuriating provision my Democratic colleagues have included in this mess of a bill is a restriction against voter roll maintenance. Anyone with a bit of common sense knows how inaccurate or duplicate entries in a data set can add up. That leaves these data sets in a state of disrepair, and that is how fraud and mistakes occur. It's just one more provision in a bill raising red flags for local officials in every single state in this country. And this red flag in particular is prompting people to ask me if my Democratic colleagues involved in drafting this bill have ever actually volunteered at a local polling place, which that really tells you a lot about how short-sighted this legislation is. Madam President, this bill really doesn't have anything to do with voting rights. This is a politically motivated federal takeover of elections that would give us the exact opposite of what's laid out in the Constitution. The founders, the founders granted the states power over their own elections for a reason. The federal government is beyond incompetent to get this job done. If you like the service you get from the IRS or the EPA or OSHA, that's what you could expect the next time your community has an election. If we allow this bill to pass, the promise of one person, one vote will crumble. The promise of counting eligible ballots and not counting <coughs> ineligible ballots would go by the wayside. And what do you get in exchange? The promise of chaos, confusion, and a lack of confidence in the integrity of the vote. Madam President,